Hi guys, welcome to the 9.2 dot plots shape and outliers video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to find outliers in a set of data, how to find the shape of your data set, and also how to interpret dot plots. All right, so first let's start out with outliers. So an outlier is a value in the set that is much greater or much less than most of the other data. And that's the number that ends up what's called skewing the data. So we don't like numbers to skew the data. Skewing the data actually means that it makes the data look like something that it's not. So if you have all A's and B's in a course um, and out of like 10 grades you have A's and B's and then your 11th grade you get um, a, an F, like a zero in your class, then you would end up getting a maybe a low B or a C average and then that ends up skewing your overall average making you look like a C student when in actuality you're an A or B student. So same thing with data sets. We don't like uh, numbers that are really large or really small to skew our data. So to find an outlier what you do is you take the quartile 1 and you subtract it from the product of 1.5 times the IQR of that quartile 1. Then for quartile 3, uh, to find the higher or upper fence, you're going to do quartile 3 plus 1.5 times your IQR. So you first have to find your median, then you have to identify the quartile 1 and quartile 3, then you have to subtract 1.5 times your IQR, and quartile 3 would be adding 1.5 times the IQR. I'm going to show you what that looks like in the next couple slides. So any values that are outside those fences, after you get your answers for the lower fence and the higher fence, if the numbers are outside those fences, then they're outliers. Just like thinking about like a movie, if somebody is outside the line of the fence, then they're considered an outlier, they're an outcast, they're not allowed in. So for dot plots, it's dot plots are data representation that uses a number line and dots or X's or sometimes other symbols to show frequency. So it can be a number line that has you know a range of numbers and then you have a bunch of data that you have to put into this dot plot. So I like to use X's and you just put your X's above each number as it's represented in the data and then you can see where the trends are. So if it's you know shifted all to the left or shifted to the right or directly in the center you can see where all the numbers lie. And when you're comparing data distributions, a data distribution can be described as symmetric or skewed to the left or skewed to the right or depending on the general shape of the distribution in the dot plot or other display. So it could be equally distributed. It could be, you know, directly in the center. You'll see once you put in all the data values in a dot plot where the data lies. So as you can see here, we've got skewed to the left. You can see the X's are more to the, to the left than to the right. So that means if it's, uh, I mean, they're shifted more to the right, which means it's skewed to the left. So that means the outliers are on the left-hand side. That's the side that it doesn't have a lot of numbers. And then symmetric, you can see it's evenly distributed from the center out. So we could fold this graph on dot plot in half over the tall four X's in the center, and it would be symmetrical on both sides. And then skewed to the right, you can see that um, the numbers that are skewed are to the right and all the late data is shifted to the left. So more than half of the data is less than the mean. So that's skewed to the right. And then for the left, more than half of the data is greater than the mean. So that means it's skewed to the left. So let's take a look at an example. So we have the average bowling score for a group of bowlers is 200, 210, through 230, 220, 230, 225, and 240. Create a dot plot. So first thing we have to do is put it in order from least to greatest. All right, so now that we have them in order from least to greatest, we can set up our number line. So our number line has to be between 200 and 240. So I know we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 spaces. So if I count by fives, I should be able to fit this data on there. So we count by fives starting at 200, it'll go up to 255. So we have all of our data being able to fit on that number line. So now I'm just gonna go in and put X's where each data point is. So 200, I put an X at 210, at 220, at 225, at 230, at 230, and at 240. So now it says, um, so first look at that. You can see that it is skewed to the right, which meaning that we have some data values that are to the left of the mean. So it says, suppose a new bowler joins their league 
and has an average score of 275 as that bowler and outlier. So first we have to put it in least to greatest again, find the median. So you can see the median is the one that's in the middle, which is 225. Then you're gonna find the IQR of the left-hand side and the IQR of the left of the right-hand side. So the, I mean, not IQR, my, I'm sorry. The median of quartile one and the median of quartile three. So remember, that's just the one that's in the middle. So you can see the one in the middle for quartile one is 210. And the one that's in the middle for quartile three is 230. So now you have to find your IQR. Well, IQR is quartile three minus quartile one. So that's 230 minus 210, so that's 20. And now to do the outlier, the rule, remember, is quartile three plus the product of 1.5 times your IQR. And to find the, uh, the low outlier, that would be quartile one minus 1.5 times IQR. So what I like to do is actually find out what 1.5 times the IQR is, and that just helps me complete the rest of the problems a little bit quicker. So 1.5 times your IQR, which is 20, 1.5 times 20 is 30. So I'm just gonna plug those values in. Well, quartile three was 230, right here. 230 plus 30 is 260. Quartile one was 210 and it says 210 minus 30 would be 180. So does 275 go outside those fences? So 260 would be, if we made a fence, would be right here, approximately. And 180 would probably be around right here. So it has to stay in between those two red lines. And does 275 go outside that line? It most certainly does because it would be past that point of 260 would be 275. So yes, 275 is an outlier, meaning the new bowler would skew the data. All right, so for this one it says, a school fundraiser is selling magazines and coupon books. The number of magazines and coupon books sold were recorded. Compare the statistics for both magazines and coupon books. So looking at this data, we have a mean 70.33, which is a lot higher than coupon books. The median is also a lot higher at 72.5 than 49. And your IQR are about the same and your standard deviation are about the same. So when you have a mean and a median that are significantly higher, so the mean and the median for the magazine subscriptions are higher, that means there were more magazines sold than coupon books. All right, so it's now your turn to complete this one. Make sure that you uh, create a dot plot and describe the distribution and then answer the question underneath. Good luck. Go Seahawks.